Hello, ocean people. Welcome back to Brent Durand Underwater. Today, I'm going to talk about smartphone housings versus GoPro housings and which camera system is right for you. We'll talk about the similarities between the systems, the differences, the pros and cons, and also how those relate to your goals as an underwater photographer or underwater videographer, the marine life you want to shoot or the scenics you want to shoot, and even your dive travel plans. Let's start by talking about some of the similarities between these camera systems. Whether you're looking at the GoPro or a smartphone housing with your Android or your iOS phone, you will capture excellent video quality. So if video is your goal or you're a maybe video shooter or a sometimes video shooter, rest assured either camera solution is great for you. You have easy to operate video with great image quality, great resolution options, and also some advanced menu settings that allow you to customize some of that video shooting. Both of these systems are also very easy to hand hold. You can grab the protective housing, uh, the protective dive housing for the GoPro with your hand, or you can take your smartphone housing with the great ergonomics around the side of your camera to move around as you go and shoot your photo or your video with a very low profile that's easy to carry in the water and very easy to travel with. And then both also can be mounted to a light system like this with the tray and handles, whether you're using one light or a two light solution. So really both of these setups are very versatile in terms of how you want to use them or how you want to mount them. You can even see some examples of my GoPro mounted on top of a DSLR housing, but that's not it. You can also mount your smartphone housing to the top of your DSLR housing if you really want to. Both of these camera solutions also work great with underwater filters, and I highly recommend those for ambient light shooting where you have great natural sunlight coming in through the water and you're shooting big wide scenes. If you haven't seen it yet, I have a video on GoPro filters linked here and in the description. Check that out to learn a little bit more about filters, why and when you want to use them. Both of these systems are also great options for using underwater video lights. Whether you want to set up your system with one single light or two different lights, you can do it with either the smartphone housing or with a GoPro. And for the smartphone housing, it doesn't matter what camera you're using or which housing. So iOS or Android, you can still use this constant video light or whether you're shooting the Sea Life Sport Diver, the Oceanic Plus Smart Housing, the Kraken Sports Housing, you've, you've got that ability to use these underwater video lights, which we often call constant lights. So another video for you to check out, linked here and in the description again, is my video tutorial on constant lighting and how and when to use constant lights for still photography and video. Now let's talk about some of the differences between these systems because those could really be the deciding factor in which system you want to purchase. If you're shooting with a smartphone housing, your phone is already inside of the camera shooting those photos and those videos, meaning that those images and that media is saved to your photo library, making it very easy to access, to edit, and to upload to social media or send to friends or whatever you want to do with that content. If you're shooting the GoPro, you have two options. You can either take out the little micro SD card, put it in an adapter, put it in a card reader into your computer or tablet to access those files, or you upload those images from the GoPro to GoPro's quick app, then to your computer, and then over to your mobile phone to upload, unless you upload straight from your computer. Either way, you're moving around a little bit because GoPro really wants you in their ecosystem. One point to mention is that on your dive trips, you might not always have really fast, reliable internet, so you can't rely on cloud backups. So keep that in mind as you're thinking about transferring media around, depending on your workflow and how you want to save your images. Because remember, ideally you will always have two copies just in case something happens. And if you have no cloud, now you need two physical copies. So just something to keep in mind when you're uh, dive traveling. One of the big differences between these systems can be with still photography. Now, I prefer to shoot on a smartphone housing for still photos for a number of reasons. First is that you have a large LCD screen, so you can see what you're shooting a lot better than the small LCD on the back of your GoPro. You also have an autofocus lock indicator, that little box that is on top of your subject in your smartphone that tells you if the, the scene is in focus or not is hugely helpful, especially as you're getting closer to the subject and want to achieve that minimum focus distance to fill the frame with your subject and really capture those details. You can tell if you're in focus on a smartphone, but on the GoPro, you have no indication of whether you're in focus. 
Um, you do have a minimum focus on the smartphone, but you can put a diopter in front of it to get very close and really magnify that subject. You can do that on a GoPro with the Backscatter Macromate and that will allow you to get closer than that 12 inch minimum focus distance, deliver great image quality as well. But again, you're limited by not knowing exactly if you're in focus and if there's a focus box. So I tend to default towards the smartphone housing. Both of them do shoot raw photos. So if you're into editing in Adobe Lightroom or a similar software, no worries there because you'll have lots of editing leeway on both. Another big difference is in functionality underwater. GoPro is pretty famous for having two buttons. You simply push one button to start recording your video or photo and can set it to do so in the settings you want, making it very easy to grab, push record, and off you go. A smartphone housing has a number of different buttons that are controlled by Bluetooth via a proprietary app. So if you have Sea Life, you have their app. If you have Oceanic Plus, you're using that app. If you have Kraken Sports housing, you're using that app. So you will control these physical buttons on the outside of your smartphone housing through that app using Bluetooth. Now, recording photo and video is still just a button press away, so it's very easy, but it could be intimidating to look at multiple buttons and know that you have to toggle between them. Both cameras do have a large menu that requires some learning and some navigation, but for the most part, if you're a very casual shooter, you don't need to worry about changing that when you're underwater. Another big difference to point out is preparation and maintenance of your camera in between dives. So to set up a GoPro, it's fairly simple. You just make sure that O-ring is clean, you pop the camera in, close the housings, and off you go. Depending on how much you're shooting, you might be able to dive all day with this GoPro clipped to your BCD, and you turn it on and off to record certain things, and that's it. It's no hassle, it's very simple. You charge it at night, you download your photos at night, you load it up into the housing the next morning, and off you go. You're good to go again. With a smartphone housing, you have a little more involved setup process. You wanna pull off the O-ring, make sure that is clean and the O-ring groove is clean, just like if you had a larger uh, camera system. And you can check out my full tutorial on maintaining your camera system and the O-rings, lubricating them, etc., with my video here and linked in the description. Then once it's clean, you take your camera out of its protective case, depending on the size of it and the size of the smartphone housing. You clean the cameras. You don't want to have fingerprints on them like you do on your cell phone. You clean the screen, you load it in, you close it. And then you add the vacuum seal, which will require uh, a port here that you will vacuum the air out of. And you will wait for a couple of minutes until the system says, hey, there are no leaks. So while that does take extra time to set up and can be a little bit annoying, it also presents great peace of mind knowing that your precious phone, your life, at least the life for many of us, is locked in this housing and it will be safe when you descend and go underwater. So the vacuum is, is a lifesaver. It's really practical. It's, it's essential on these to give you peace of mind and also safety, um, but it does take that extra time. So you have to be aware and willing to do that setup process on the boat or prior to your dive. Then depending on your phone usage, you may need to pull the phone out, recharge it on a battery because odds are you only have one cell phone. So you have a portable battery or maybe a charger inside of the liveaboard or the dive boat in between dives. And then you make sure everything's clean. You pop it in, you pump it, vacuum, and you go to the next dive. So there's that additional maintenance that can be a factor for a lot of people if that's not your thing and you wanna grab your GoPro and go. So which system is best for you? So you can probably tell by this video, I don't have a yes or no solution, and I really never do in terms of these choices because so much comes down to personal preference. What do you want to travel with? What are your goals with your underwater photo and video? How advanced do you want to take it? How much editing do you want to do on the computer or the tablet once you're back from your dive? All of these things are going to factor into your decision. But with both systems, a lot of the big uh, considerations are very similar. You can shoot with one video light or two video lights. You can shoot with filters. You shoot great video. Both are easy to travel with um, and both are very easy to maintain. So there are a lot of pros and cons, whether you're shooting with a smartphone system or a GoPro. If you do have additional questions, leave them in the comments below. I will reply to all comments, maybe even make a video answering your question because these are very popular topics. Be sure to subscribe for more and check out the rest of the videos on my channel. See you in the next one. Thank you.